Hello, this is Steve, Dichroic Glassman. Well, let's talk about these hummingbirds for a minute. Dichroic hummingbirds. How in the world? By the way, typically, you'll never see me with a hummingbird soldered together. <laughs> this is going into a panel. Two things. Not only is this going into a panel, did you notice this is a lefty? GSD has never made them before. But hey, we don't need to know that right now. Let's talk about the very beginning. I need to clear up some, some misnomers about this dichroic glass process that's starting to catch on with a lot of folks. Um, I don't make bevels. Guess what? I don't make physically grind any bevels. I buy GST9s. You've seen these things before. It's called a GST9 the hummingbird and it's comprised of 24 pieces it's a large hummingbird as it says here GST 9 you can find them all over the internet and this is the pattern that comes in the box people have said where do I get the pattern uh, other than the box I really couldn't tell you unless people like me ran copies of them it's a very simple pattern. It's very elegant. Could be done really nicely. Could be embellished more with an outer border on it. I would do more with it, and it would be a great centerpiece with something else going around it. But let's don't talk about that. Let's talk about what does it take for a person to make these. So teach me the process. Where do we go? I don't make bevels, and I don't make dichroic glass. And I don't make the composite it takes to put dichroic glass, real dichroic glass, where we create scraps utilizing real thin 040 millimeter, really thin. It's so thin. <laughs> Look how thin. And my fingers almost appear. It's very strong glass because it's float glass. It's dichroic uh, coated on float, 82, 84 coefficient, but we're not melting it. So let's get this heat thing out of our mind. And maybe this video will help. This is what a fused cabochon looks like. I, I know, I, I, I make these in, in many uh, fused glass, and it has a dome effect because the glass wants to, it's basic kiln physics where it creates that dome effect. There is no dome effect here on the back side of the glass it's perfectly flat and it's beveled on the top because that's how they came in a shrink wrapped package so how does real dichro meet a bevel in real life just like you see here through my process that is what i've created through my process I don't want to accentuate my <laughs> and through the through the process that I that I am involved in. Remember, I don't make bevels, I don't make dichro, I don't make the the polymer, the agent that marries the two together that creates an absolute bond. You cannot break these apart. You cannot get the dichro off of this glass and it didn't get there by heat. It came through a polymer through an agent that I didn't create. Three components it takes to make this. The bevel, the dichro, and the process to put the dichro onto the bevel, which is what you see here. And I'm the contributor of the process. Other than that, again, I don't make the dichro, I don't make the bevel, and I don't make the stuff that makes it happen. I created the process. So that helps for some people who are buying my hummingbirds and other objects off of my Etsy store. But I need to clarify this. So when a person buys this bevel, whether you buy it off of eBay or any of the big distributors or your local stained glass store, these will retail for as much as $100 in clear, folks. I have seen these for $100. Just what you see right here. This clear... As you can see, there's no color. So what makes the dichroic it better? Well, let's talk about it through, it, it, let's make an analogy. That dichroic is almost the full orchestration of color. 
everything's represented here in this rainbow myriad here that's ever shifting and changing. But yet, this is one instrument. This is a guitar, this is a bass, this is a drum. This is the whole orchestra. How do you compare the two? I don't know. I don't know how you can have that conversation. There's so much energy going on here versus pretty blasé. Look at, look at, it's so transparent, it's taking on the cardboard backing persona wrapped in little tissue paper. It has no identity. As far as I'm concerned, a clear bevel is waiting for its identity. There was a time in my stained glass life that I got bored from clear bevels. This is a GST9, right. It's all in a package ready to be laminated next, the process. From here, gather together, I'll lay them out, and then one by one, you'll see Dicro. So it's really about the process, folks, and with this process, there's so much more. I plan on being a little bit more investigative in my new video series that's coming up soon, waiting for a very special day for me in my world of self-imagery. And it's a pretty important day. It's a trophy for me that I'm really excited about because by all odds, I, never, I shouldn't even be here. <laughs> so I'm going to explain that a little bit more. And more thorough in my new videos, I purpose to be really adept and come from, the, come from all kinds of different angles. In fact, let's address this one last thought. Like I said, these can be as high as $100. Um, as far as I know, I'm the only one selling these to the public. And currently, as of today, um, we'll just say for the sake of the video, but that doesn't mean I'm stuck for life just because I say it in the video. In fact, I'll, I'll write that description of my price in the description. That way, I'm not stuck on the video. So what we need to, to talk about, the bird in itself costs money. The bird. The dichro costs real money to, in order to arrive at the finished product. Basically, by the time you're done, you've got the retail here or wholesale, and you've got retail here or wholesale. You have the agent in between or wholesale and your labor. So these are not cheap. These are not something you're going to just fly in on by t uh, t uh, 10 for a dollar, you know, looking for uh, a deal on 10 and walk out the door and think la di da. I had to do the process that creates all the scrap. And you have to be incredibly inventive to get a color scheme that's unique out of a sheet of glass. More to come. What do you think? Hopefully this clarifies a few things. Bye-bye.